it's never too late for a new beginning in your life. This is the Wisdom Worth Knowing podcast. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain. If it's your first time joining, welcome. Thanks for giving us a shot. You can subscribe to the podcast on Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble. Don't forget to like and share as well. It helps feed the algorithms to help the show grow. You can also subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. You can leave reviews there as well to help the show grow. The show is brought to you by Audible, where listening is the new reading. Get unlimited access to thousands of audiobooks completely free for my listeners for 30 days. Sign up right now for this limited time offer at audible.wisdomworthknowing.org. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot wisdomworthknowing.org. It's never too late for a new beginning in your life. How we sell ourselves short. It's going to be the subject of today's episode. We always assume that no matter what age we are, we're too old or we're too young to accomplish anything. We never run out of excuses, it seems, to keep ourselves from success. It's really weird that as human beings, we've become extremely proficient in self-sabotage. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's part of being a, a fallen creature, but generally speaking... We're really, really, really hard on ourselves. We just are. You know, I, I, most people are. And, and we do not even see a, a portion of our potential. And so that's really what I want to talk about today is your potential. Because this is a very personal subject for me. Because I've gone through many, many stages of insecurity in my life. And then there's some fundamental truths that I've discovered along the way that really helped me stay on the path to stay motivated and to stay learning and to embrace these new beginnings. Now, I, of course, am not perfect. And depending on your definition of success, there's many areas I probably don't wouldn't even be close to your standard of, of success. But I feel like in my personal self-evaluation, I've done a pretty good job, so I'm happy with me, which if you listen to the show at all, you'll know that our self-assessments, to me, are more valuable than what other people think of us. I think we are individuals, and we need to only compare ourselves to ourselves in most cases so that as we make improvements, we're being realistic with what our expectations are as we grow. And it's a very dangerous game when we start to compare ourselves with others because we don't know others that well. We barely know the people we're closest to. So I'm going to share my experiences with you that I think have really helped me continue on this path of new beginnings. I am 37 years old. I started this podcast. Um, I mean, as of the, the recording of this episode, it looks like we're on episode 70. And, and I made it a personal goal to do a new video every single day, which means I'm only 70 days into this thing. And it still is a perpetual challenge for me to wake up every morning and to do this every day. I mean, because like, what's the point, right? Why am I, wh why? You know, you, you can really get filled with all this self-doubt and self-criticism and why are you even bothering and Nobody's even listening. You're like you'll, you'll wrap yourself up in all of these negative emotions that really, really sabotage your potential. And I get it. I still experience it on a daily basis. You know, why bother? <clears throat> and the being too old and thinking it's too late for you to continue to grow. Well, I'm going to do my best to demolish that lie for you today. So one of the first things that's a cornerstone of of, of a lot of this de self development thing is is I read an article in college in high school no it was in high school completely by accident I came across it was in a science magazine and a real common theme that occurred and I'm sure it still happens to this day was my peers 
in high school would constantly tell the teacher, like, when am I ever going to use this? What's the point? Why am I bothering? When am I going to use geometry? When am I going to use calculus? When am I going to use pre-calculus? When am I going to use algebra, writing, English in the real world? When, when is this going to be useful to me? And I, I felt the same way. It's like, I have to believe there was a purpose to it. I trusted that those who were in charge of my education were had my best interests at heart. And I, I genuinely think a lot of them at my time in high school, they did. So I was blessed for that. But this article that I came across blew my mind. Like it completely changed the way I looked at education. And what it discussed, and you could probably Google it now, what it discussed was that our brains, the way they, they build new neuro connections, work like a branch or branches of a tree. And what the article was saying was that as we de develop different parts of our brains, whether it's through mathematics or art or music, as we extend out these branches of our minds, a very, very interesting thing happens. Because like in our minds, we think that, well, there's only so much we can learn, right? There's almost only so much storage up there. And so as you learn a certain amount, it'll just get pushed out the other side. Well, what they actually are discovering, or were discovering, this is when I was on, I was in high school, I'm sure it's only more concrete now, is your brain develops new neuropathways that it never had before, depending on the types of puzzles and things you're learning. So what they discovered is as your brain develops and as you learn, you actually increase your brain's ability to learn. So you create new permanent neural pathways in your brain that allow for future connectivity to other aspects of your mind. And a lot of the things that we learn are interconnected. Like there are, there is mathematics in music when it comes to timing and, and theory. And then, then there's writing in music. So like a lot of the things that we do throughout our lives and a lot of the things we experience in this world are interconnected. And so what we learn is, is that we are, the more we learn, the more we're capable of learning. And this was super eye-opening for me because when I was sitting there going through the drudgery of algebra or geometry, and I was racking my brain as to when am I ever going to use this, it really helped fill in that gap. It was like, well, I may not use algebra specifically, but algebra teaches me a certain way of thinking and problem solving. And that understanding of how mathematics works will probably translate into other areas of my life without me even knowing it. It'll actually fascinate people if they actually look into logic, like basic logic, which is a thing, right? You can actually look up basic logic and how it works, is how mathematical it is. Same thing with mathematical proofs is it uses fundamental logic that's not always mathematical. So there's a lot of crossover in the real world with theoretical mathematics and chemistry and physics. Like there's a lot of actual crossover. And as we kind of build these new neural pathways and connections, we actually expand our ability to learn new things. So it's not so much what we're learning, it's we're learning how to learn better. And this was incredibly powerful. It's still powerful me to me, for me to this day because then I'll sit there and I was like, well, why would I bother learning this new skill? Why would I bother learning how to program? Why would I bother learning how to write better or how to make a podcast? Well, the fact of the matter is, is, is I may not become a professional podcaster. I may not become a professional mathematician. I may not become a professional programmer. But what I do become is a person who understands how programming works and how it's used, or how podcasting works, and how it's used, or how writing works, and how it's used. And then I, I open up more potential for myself, because I can take these skills, and these neural pathways that I've, I've developed, and, and apply them to different areas of my life. And it teaches you different ways, and different ways and approaches to problems. The brain 
the human brain, we only really tap into a small percentage of its potential. And so one thing that I do want you to grasp from this is that no matter what age you are along this path, you can begin building those connections now. You know, you can start learning a new skill now. And sure, you may not become a professional at that specific skill you're learning, but you are improving your mind. You're strengthening your mind and the connections that it has. And then whatever that new skill is, even if it doesn't pan out, you carry that with you into the next thing. And you can literally start that today. You can buy a book. You can jump on YouTube and watch videos. And an unchallenged mind is, is I, I believe it becomes a depressed mind in a lot of ways. And, and that's true for me. Like I genuinely need to be challenged all the time. And if I get in a routine and a rut, this challenging part is becomes increasingly difficult for me to function on a daily basis if I'm not challenged. And so a lot of times I need to find new ways to challenge myself just to keep myself from driving myself insane. <laughs> We're going to dig into this a little bit here in a moment. But first, Wisdom Worth Knowing is brought to you by Amazon Audible. If you're like me and you love reading but don't have the time, then Audible audiobooks may be the perfect solution for you. With Audible, listening is the new reading. You can pop in your earbuds and discover that next exciting adventure or expand your knowledge from any PC, Mac, Android, Alexa, or Apple device. And check this out, because you listen to this show, for a limited time, you get instant access to thousands of audiobooks from Audible's Premium Plus catalog completely free. Just visit audible.wisdomworthknowing.org and take advantage of this free trial for my listeners for 30 days. That's right, for 30 days, you'll get full access to Audible's Premium Plus catalog, as well as an additional free title of your choosing. If you discover audiobooks aren't for you, no problem. You can cancel instantly online. Your card won't ever even get charged. That's it. It's that simple. Two years ago, audiobooks began to change my life, and they may change yours, too. Pause this podcast and head over to Audible. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot wisdomworthknowing.org. And sign up for this limited time offer for my listeners right now. That's you. So understanding how the brain works was immensely beneficial for me. I'm so grateful that I came across that when I was probably 16 years old. Because then actually when I ran into that question or I heard my peers saying, when am I ever going to use this? And I was like, well, once you know something, you have no idea what you might use it in. We don't know. But I'll tell you one thing for sure is if you don't learn it, you'll never use it. <laughs> I mean, you just won't. I think the reason, I think there was a, a, a fundamental logic that was just lost. You know, it was not explained to people properly. But I think the people who were originally developing curriculums for education several decades ago, understood that if we can teach them calculus, they can do a budget. You know, if, if people have the ability to do pre-calculus, then they can certainly balance a checkbook. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think they should have taught us both in high school, and there's a lot of reasons they didn't that are somewhat political that I don't want to get into. But the the point is, is if you your brain is capable of grasping these advanced chemistry, mathematics, physics, writing concepts, and that you actually understand them well, then your brain is that much more proficient in learning something that is technically less complicated than that. So in other words, they, they said, okay, well, we'll push the human mind the most we can for this 12 to 14 years that we have them in school. We'll push their brains to the limit. And then when they get out in the real world and they face practical problems, those practical problems should not be as difficult to tackle. I'd like to believe that fundamentally is what they were going for. Now, the problem is, is we lost that somewhere in the mix. Like teachers stopped explaining that to students. They said, well, you're learning pre-calculus so that you can balance a checkbook. And then people were like, well, why don't you just teach me how to balance a checkbook? And they're like, because balancing a checkbook is easy. You know, it's like, it, that'll be like one lesson for one day. But if you can sit down and dedicate yourself to something that's super advanced in mathematics, then balancing a checkbook should be a breeze for you. But here's the problem. You do need to actually sit down at some point and learn how to balance a checkbook, like on your own. School doesn't have to teach you everything. You know, like we teach you how to learn. 
that was that should have been the message and that should still be the message in college is like we we're teaching you how to learn not everything you need to know so that you can take that ability that you've skilled that you've learned which is how to learn out into the real world and you can apply problem solving and troubleshooting techniques to wherever you might land And for some reason, we completely lost sight of this. Like people come out of college assuming, and, and it's partially the college's fault, that they're done learning. And that's just horrifically misleading. 37 years old, I've been at the same job for 15 years. And every day I walk into that building, I have to learn something new. It helps that I'm part of a small business. So small businesses mean that the problems never stop coming. You know, like they, they just don't. Your job isn't a canned one one routine thing that keeps it interesting but there are new challenges that confront me every day and if i was of the opinion that i'm done learning then these new problems wouldn't be my problem so i'm grateful that i, I at least had a father who who and a mother who were part of this entrepreneurial ground up situation in which they fundamentally understood that new problems that come your way are, are challenges that you need to figure out how to navigate. And this is something that I, I really took for granted because I didn't realize how few people had this example. But this is what was lost in our, our culture. So the, the, the first part that I, I wanted to talk about was that article because I think that's immensely valuable on this. It's, it's never too late for a new beginning in your life because it's never too late to start building those neural pathways. You can literally start doing that this very second. You're probably doing it just by listening to this podcast. Anything that remotely challenges your mind or forces you into a position of thinking about something deeper is developing new connections. The second thing I wanted to talk about is time. So the it's never too late. Human beings contribute at their peak at around ages f to their careers around between the ages of 40 to 50. That's where that's where most humans reach peak efficacy in their careers. That's when they become the most influential the most valuable, the most experienced, and have the most energy is between that 40 and 50 year range. And that's because at that point, hopefully they've cultivated enough experience to be able to do whatever it is that they're doing in their career of choice very well. And the reason I bring that up is because that is a small section of our lives. And if we get wrapped up in the idea that we need to be at our maximum potential all the time, then yeah, we will give up before we start on all of these things. We'll always assume it's too late. And I wanted to point out that because there's really only a small window of efficacy we as human beings have anyway, it does not make sense to get wrapped up in doing something for long periods of time. In other words, if you learn to do something really well, you can do it really well and, and make a significant impact in a very short period of time. Like if you learn a new skill, like, I don't know, maybe you want to be better at taking care of your house. And maybe that's your new beginning. Maybe today you're going to decide, I'm going to be, be a better homeowner. You can acquire those skills pretty quickly, especially with the internet and online education tools available to you. And honestly, within, what is it, three to six months, you will probably have mastered a handful of them. And then you will carry that with you maybe for the final seasons of your life if you started learning that at 60. And But still, that that's a skill that you will get to use at any point. So it's never too late to acquire a skill that could be used. We get wrapped up into the cultural representation of personal development and that we have to follow a certain path in order to become better people or proficient and effective people. And that is a flat out lie. There is never a point in our lives in which it's the appropriate season to learn something. 
all seasons are the appropriate season to learn something. You don't have to go to elementary school, go to middle school, go to high school, go to college, start your career. You don't have to follow that path exactly along that trajectory and that timeline. That's not realistic, first of all, because not everybody's paths are that straight lined. Not everybody has that stability. Sometimes you go to school, drop out of school, go back to school, graduate. Then you go to work in a career with a GED. And then you find, hey, it would be great in my career if I had an associate's degree. So then while you're working, you go to night school. And then you maybe scrounge up enough time and energy across five to 10 years to get that associate's degree. And then you maybe go up in your job and you develop, you get promoted. And then you're like, hey, it would be great if I had a bachelor's degree or Maybe if I got some certifications and then you went out and got certified in specific areas of your job, like this is more realistically how the path of life works is it's not a straight line. Or maybe you get fired or get laid off in your 30s or 40s and you have to do a full on career change and you've got to start all, all over again. You take that pay cut, you go back to a new job and a new career. <clears throat> you realize that your degree didn't give you what you needed in that specific career. So now you got to go back to school for a couple years. And, and this is all, this is life. You know, life happens. The, the strongest people and the most effective people are the ones who adapt the best. The ones who don't get so incredibly rigid and how their lives are supposed to be currently going and how they should go in the future. Those are the ones who end up being the most effective. Because to a point, to a significant point, life happens to us. We don't, we don't get to define the route we take. There are certain ways we can carve new paths. It takes a tremendous amount of courage and work to do that. But for most of us, more, more, a lot of our, our lives are the result of external circumstances. Now, I'm, saying, I'm not saying we're completely powerless, right? We can pick up and we can move. <clears throat> but, but there are a lot of forces outside of our control. And, and if we, rather than looking at that as a bad thing, if we say, okay, well, where are my opportunities here? And we maximize our current situation. Then that's a much healthier approach. <clears throat> and it also allows us to adapt to whatever's occurring at that stage of life. So these are two things that I really cling on to, you know, in, in, in signing up for things like Audible, which, like I said, audible.wisdomworthknowing.org will give you that special deal. It, it gives you access to thousands of audiobooks that, these are all potential pathways. And maybe you go down one for a couple of weeks and you discover it's not for you. Well, that still is not a wasted two weeks. You discovered it wasn't for you. That has value to it. <clears throat> and so it's the same thing with everything else. You know, you, you experiment with something and then you start building that experience and that knowledge base. And it's very true. And, and I can tell you this at 37 as opposed to 17. Because I have stuck with this, and I'm not doing this as self-appraisal, I'm just stating a fact. Because I've kind of adopted this philosophy of the more I learn, the more I'm capable of learning. It is incredibly easy for me to learn a new skill now compared to how it used to be. And that is because of, of the conditioning and time and energy I've put into my brain. Um... And, and like I say, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that 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 study that I read in high school turned out to be true. It did. It just turned out to be fact. The more I learn, the the easier it is to learn new things. It's become easier for me. So if you're one of those people where things just don't seem to come easily for you, it's like just get started learning something new. And yes, it's super frustrating at first. And every time I'm learning something new, yes, it is frustrating. But my ability to learn is better now than it was 10 years ago. And it was better 10 years ago than it was 10 years before that. So as long as we stay on that path, 
things do get easier. So yeah, I hope that helps some of you out there today. This is the Wisdom Worth Knowing podcast. I'm your host, Craig Chamberlain. Thank you for joining me today. Before you go, feed the algorithms and like, share, and subscribe on Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble. Also, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, and leave a review if you like the show. If you don't like the show, please don't. (laughs) Wisdom Worth Knowing is brought to you by Audible, where listening is the new reading. Get unlimited access to thousands of audiobooks completely free for my listeners for 30 days. Sign up right now for this exclusive offer at audible.wisdomworthknowing.org. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot wisdomworthknowing.org. Before we go today, remember it's never too late for a new beginning in your life. So let's work on being the best version of ourselves we can today because, as always, that's all we can do. I will see you all tomorrow.